Hello and welcome to this Telecoms.com webinar produced in association with Aptillo Networks, which I'm pleased to announce is also one of the shortlisted companies for our Telecoms.com industry awards this year. I'm James Middleton, Managing Editor of Telecoms.com, and I'm joined today by two speakers, Simon Inns, a Senior Network Sales Engineer with Aptillo, and Samer Iskander, a Sales Support Manager with Aptillo's partner Ericsson. Now, Aptillo was shortlisted in our best use of Wi-Fi category for its 3G PP Wi-Fi access unified solution, and it is on this subject that Simon and Sama are going to speak. Aptillo believes 2014 will be the year 3G PP Wi-Fi access and the first hotspot 2.0 networks will start to deploy. Then further down the line, a more intelligent ANDSF, access network discovery and selection function, will emerge making the vision of a true heterogeneous network a reality. Indeed, there's no shortage of research that suggests Taptillo is right on the money in terms of Wi-Fi deployments. Signals and Systems Telecom, a Dubai-based research agency, forecasts that small cell and carrier Wi-Fi infrastructure investments are expected to reach $4 billion in 2015, driven by in-building wireless coverage requirements, the growing influx of mobile broadband data traffic, and the lack of spectrum where a traditional macro cell based cellular network deployment is not deemed to be a sufficient solution to address the coverage and capacity needs of today's wireless subscribers. As a result, mobile operators are increasing their spending in the evolving HetNet market, which encompasses small cell carrier Wi-Fi, distributed antenna systems and cloud RAN equipment. Meanwhile, US market research agency TechNavio forecasts that the global carrier Wi-Fi equipment market will grow at a compound annual growth rate of 33% over the period 2012 to 2016, with one of the key factors contributing to this market growth, the increasing need for data offloading, as well as some indication that the global carrier Wi-Fi market has also been witnessing wide acceptance of voice over Wi-Fi. However, Technavio does suggest that interoperability issues between cellular and Wi-Fi networks could pose a challenge to the growth of this market. And this is exactly what Attilo and Ericsson aim to address. But there, there are some that believe the existing efforts are doing enough. We spoke to Chris Pearson, president of 4G Americas at the end of last year, about the spectrum crunch in the US, and asked him if enough progress is being made in integrating cellular and Wi-Fi from an improved user experience. In my view, yes, he said. Wi-Fi complements cellular effectively and is an essential tool in the toolkit for mobile broadband carriers. There was also some research carried out by the Wi-Fi Alliance, also towards the end of last year, which found that the majority of consumers, 74%, in a 2,000-person survey across France, Germany, Sweden and the UK, are willing to switch service providers in order to gain access to seamless Wi-Fi discovery and authentication features. Moreover, 91% said they would be more loyal to a current service provider that offered a service which incorporated these features. The research noted that tablet usage in homes and on public Wi-Fi networks is on the rise and approaching a rate similar to smartphone usage. According to the study, over a third of tablet users connect their devices to public Wi-Fi networks today, and 57% reported that they expect to connect their tablets via hotspot networks three years from now. However, no matter how well a standard has been thought out, it will always need to be complemented with pragmatic solutions in reality which is why Simon and Sama are here to discuss how pragmatic end-to-end -end solutions can help service providers to overcome the challenges ahead. Both speakers will be available after their presentations to take your questions. You can ask a question at any time during the webinar by typing it into the text field on the landing page. Simon and Sama will answer your questions in real time afterwards. Now I'm going to hand over to Simon. Thanks for the introduction, James, and for the opportunity to speak today about 3GPP Wi-Fi services. Hello everyone and thanks for joining this webinar. My name is Simon Inns and I work as a senior sales engineer for Aptillo Networks based in Sweden. My role within Aptillo is the technical analysis of customer requirements to ensure the best fit solution in every deployment we are involved in across Europe and the Middle East. Today I'd like to discuss the challenges and opportunities for operators looking to deploy Wi-Fi services with a focus on the complexities of rolling out 3GPP access technologies whilst ensuring that as many subscribers as possible can connect using a wide variety of Wi-Fi devices with and without SIM cards. Eric and Aptillo have entered into a partnership which provides an end-to-end -end carrier Wi-Fi solution with the Aptillo service management platform as an integrated component in the Wi-Fi core. 
Along with my colleague Sammy from Ericsson, we will explore the requirements on Wi-Fi deployments and demonstrate why Wi-Fi networks need to be intelligent end-to-end, -end, from the network core to the network edge. To begin with, let's take a look at the primary drivers behind the rollout of Wi-Fi, as well as the enhancement of legacy Wi-Fi deployments towards seamless Wi-Fi offloading solutions powered by technologies such as EatSim. There are many reasons why operators choose to deploy Wi-Fi solutions, and these reasons are changing over time. For the initial standalone Wi-Fi deployments, the emphasis was on market differentiation and additional revenue streams. Wi-Fi allowed the operator to offer Wi-Fi connectivity to their subscribers for laptops as well as mobile phones. And the use of public hotspots allowed monetization from nomadic users, especially in places such as airports and hotels. These drivers are still important to operators. However, the new generation of smart mobile devices and the resulting increase in mobile traffic has convinced operators to consider Wi-Fi as a viable RAN alternative for both general offloading of the 3G, 4G data network and as a replacement for the mobile data network in high-density public spaces, such as stadiums where mobile infrastructure can struggle to cope with the demand. As an operator, it's important to follow your customer. If you're not supplying an easy-to-use Wi-Fi solution, then odds are your competitors will be. Keeping your subscribers connected seamlessly and securely is paramount, and this is not just important for smartphone users. Subscribers have a range of Wi-Fi devices, such as tablets and laptops, and the number and variety of these Wi-Fi devices is increasing daily. When a mobile subscriber sees his phone is connected to Wi-Fi, the assumption is that Wi-Fi is also available to his laptop. A big driver behind more advanced Wi-Fi services is making sure this expectation is met and, where possible, exceeding. The telecommunications industry is moving fast, and Wi-Fi services are no exception. Aptil has seen a big increase in the demand for 3GPP Wi-Fi services from our customers, and 2014 looks to be an exciting year as more and more operators move from pure SIM-based 3GPP offloading to intelligent mobile core integrated Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is now a strategic requirement and is fueling the need for new technologies such as Hotspot 2.0 and access network detection and selection. These technologies are focused on streamlining the network edge, making both the devices and the access points smarter, as well as the mobile core, with true integration of both mobile and Wi-Fi data. Our partnership with Ericsson is a testament to these needs, combining the best of breed radio access network and mobile network core technology with Aptilo's industry-leading Wi-Fi service management platform. The future for Wi-Fi offloading looks bright, and we believe that in the near future, operators will be once asking again, what is offloading? As the data usage increases and Wi-Fi offload exceeds 50% of the traffic, the question will be more, what is offloading what? A smart network edge integrated tightly to the mobile core will allow Wi-Fi and mobile data to work in unison to provide the very best possible service to subscribers, no matter which device they choose to use or the location they use it from. The current possibilities are now far removed from the previous decade of on-the-side hotspots and simple bundled Wi-Fi services. Mobile subscribers have learned to demand more and more from their operator. Speed and ease of use are now deciding factors as the internet becomes more and more mobile-based. In order to understand what's needed to deploy successful Wi-Fi services based on 3GPP standards, it's important to understand what 3GPP offloading is and isn't. The 3GPP standards for Wi-Fi mobile data offload are well-defined, and we all know that compliance towards such standards is important to ensure that the resulting network is both cost-effective and future-proof. However, 3GPP Wi-Fi offload has suffered from relatively slow adoption by operators. This has been caused by a number of different factors, but I would state that there are two primary reasons. First, support for EPSIM in smartphone devices has taken longer than expected. Pretty much all of the current range of smartphones now support EPSIM, However, the vast majority of devices out there are older versions, so it will take at least a couple of years before support is universal. Secondarily, subscribers have many different Wi-Fi devices, and only one of them is a smartphone. The 3GPP standards require that all Wi-Fi devices contain a SIM card, which clearly isn't the case right now. To understand the requirements in real-world Wi-Fi deployment, it's necessary to consider not just the devices and the authentication methods, such as each SIM, but also the variety of equipment and standards which exist within a diverse Wi-Fi deployment. Whereas 3GPP provides support for SIM-based devices, a diverse Wi-Fi deployment will allow for many types of Wi-Fi devices. This brings with it needs which affect the whole deployment from top to bottom. Operators need to support many device types, which means multiple authentication methods, from the more advanced deep SIM all the way to traditional portal-based login. Similarly, there are requirements in the Access Network too, if you're dealing with both mobile and non-mobile subscriber traffic, 
you need access and routing intelligence to allow you to move the traffic through the mobile core or locally offload it on a case-by-case -case basis. All of this leads to requirements for granular policy and decision-making in the Wi-Fi network. The type of subscriber, the type of access device, and many other factors determine how you want to treat and control the traffic, and ultimately how and what you will bill for. In a real-world Wi-Fi deployment, there are many different subscriber models. 3GPP deals with the mobile subscriber, providing they're using a SIM-based device. But there are a number of other subscriber types which, if supported, can help monetize the Wi-Fi deployment. Nomadic and public Wi-Fi users are prime examples. These users typically have no subscription to the operator's mobile network, but through verticals, such as hotels, airports, train stations, and the like, they're ready and willing to receive and pay for data services. The number and diversity of Wi-Fi capable devices is expanding at an amazing rate. The traditional stereotype of business users with tablets and laptops is being rewritten by the increase in mobile-based internet services, such as Spotify, Facebook, as well as the rapid uptake of handheld mobile gaming and other increasingly data-intensive services, such as Netflix. Even when the devices can support each SIM, there are still exceptions. The mobile subscriber might not be a customer of the operator owning the Wi-Fi infrastructure and may still need an alternative authentication mechanism. The plethora of Wi-Fi device types brings the need to support a wide range of authentication types, but it's more complex than that. Subscribers will be using both SIM and non-SIM devices and require that their mobile data services work seamlessly. Attilo's advanced authentication support allows mobile operators to use eTTLS-based certificates on non-mobile devices, making them act just like each SIM devices towards the mobile network. Operators can provide seamless access to their subscribers' laptops and tablets, treating the traffic just like any other mobile data device. Without such solutions, seamless mobile offload is only seamless to less than 30% of the available devices. With a pure 3GPP solution, operators are missing out on a large chunk of the potential revenue, and subscribers are faced with segmented access methods in order to meet their needs. It would be a happy scenario if operators, when planning Wi-Fi offload, started with a greenfield deployment and were able to have the same modern equipment across the network. Typically, this isn't the case, though, and any real-world Wi-Fi deployment has to deal with the fact that there are a number of legacy components present in the network. There will be issues such as access points with no SIM support and routing equipment which cannot interface with the mobile core. The operator has to carefully consider the user experience of its subscribers when they connect to legacy hotspots. Flexible policy enforcement and network intelligence will allow the operator to carefully control who connects where and what their service experience is like. It may even be necessary to prevent subscribers connecting over Wi-Fi to ensure that they receive a mobile data experience that they require. The subscriber base in a diverse Wi-Fi deployment is often spread over different databases. For example, a large fixed and mobile operator will have LDAP databases storing residential and fixed subscriber information, as well as a HLR for storing mobile subscriber information. It's important that an intelligent Wi-Fi core can tie these data sources together, allowing as many different subscriber types as possible to share the available services. Ad hoc and nomadic subscribers, both mobile and otherwise, drive a need for web-based captive portal style solutions, which direct the subscriber to a landing page where they can manually enter their credentials. This, of course, leads to the Wi-Fi solution dealing with both trusted and untrusted Wi-Fi traffic, which is another concern for policy and routing intelligence. The 3GPP standards dictate that the policy and charging rules are handled by the PCRF in the mobile core. However, as we've seen, Wi-Fi brings a number of access and device-specific requirements which a typical PCRF solution cannot handle. The intelligent Wi-Fi core must augment the existing PCRF policies for mobile data subscribers, as well as replacing it for non-mobile subscribers. For example, if the operator wishes to provide incentives to subscribers, encouraging them to use the Wi-Fi services when available, they may wish to offer slightly different policy and charging to subscribers connected to the mobile data from the Wi-Fi network. An example of this could be more bandwidth or more data volume from Wi-Fi compared to their existing 3G, 4G data subscription. This requires that the PCRF understand which RAN the subscriber is connected to, as the access method changes both policy and charging employed. Another consideration is the speed at which the Wi-Fi network changes. Mobile networks tend to be quite static, and new equipment is added at a fairly controlled rate. Wi-Fi networks, on the other hand, are constantly changing, as new hotspots and existing hotspots are changed. This can lead to workflows which the mobile core PCRF is poorly suited. We also can't forget the fixed subscriber where policy is typically localized in the Wi-Fi network. 
Last but definitely not least, mobile data services must be accounted for and billed. Bundling is a very inefficient method of monetization in most cases. A truly intelligent Wi-Fi call will be able to account for subscribers and map this accounting into the existing mobile call billing systems, as well as performing independent billing and accounting for non-mobile users. With the introduction of captive portals to support nomadic and ad hoc public users, there will also be a need for other billing methods, such as credit cards and vouchers, which must work alongside current mobile core pre- and post-pay billing in order to deliver a complete solution. When we look at 3GPP mobile offloading from a high level, seamless Wi-Fi access looks simple. The device communicates with the mobile core using eSIM in order to authenticate, and then all traffic is pumped through the existing mobile network on its way to and from the internet. Any device which cannot support EPSIM or has no SIM card is simply not supported. But what about the rest? As I've already mentioned, a diverse real-world Wi-Fi deployment places many demands on both the mobile and Wi-Fi core. Tight integration of the mobile core, service control, billing, and most importantly, the user experience must be carefully considered. What this all leads to is the need to redefine what we mean when we say seamless. All too often, operators are told that with 3GPP SIM authentication, uh, their subscribers will have seamless access from Wi-Fi. But is this really the end of the story? Seamlessness isn't just about authentication. It's the entire scope of the subscriber's experience. A truly seamless service will provide authentication, billing, policy, access quality control, and more. In addition, the service has to be smart. For business-to-business -business support, the service must also be able to differentiate user experience based on information such as the subscriber's location. A hotel or stadium has little to gain by providing Wi-Fi footprint to mobile operator's subscribers if everything is seamless. The subscriber won't even know that the hotel is providing the service. The issues surrounding seamless access and venues serve as an interesting example of the need for intelligent policy within seamless Wi-Fi deployments. Venues include locations such as airports, hospitals, hotels, and other public spaces. Typically, these areas are already set up for Wi-Fi access, and if an operator wants to use this valuable infrastructure, they have to provide value not just to their subscribers, but also to the venue owners. Obviously, from a user experience point of view, you still want the authentication to be handled seamlessly, but then the venue owners will want a location-based landing page, which the subscriber is redirected through when they first connect. Since a full walled garden approach will prevent the subscriber's device from accessing email and other non-web services, this filter must only redirect a web request while still allowing access to non-interactive services. With such policy intelligence within the Wi-Fi offloading core, you can get the best of both worlds. Subscribers get Wi-Fi access with minimal interruption, and the venue owners can provide local information, advertising, and other services relevant to the Wi-Fi users. Venues also offer a wide scope for extra revenue streams. Public and ad hoc users can be sent to a captive portal page, which allows them to sign up on the spot for Wi-Fi if they're not already a subscriber to the host operator. This type of approach can be used for all open SSID applications from coffee shop chains all the way to international airports. The Aptilo service architecture is geared towards the integration of a truly diverse Wi-Fi and mobile data environment. Sim authentication will get you so far, but policy in charging the intelligence, smart adaptive mobile core integration, and carrier class service management is required. Seamless Wi-Fi offloading can only be achieved through the careful architecture of the service at all levels of the mobile core infrastructure. In conclusion, there are five important areas to consider when designing and deploying a 3GPP-based Wi-Fi network, which needs to support a complete range of subscribers and allows monetization from both operator and vertical industry-based hotspots. Core integration is key. The Wi-Fi network must allow for and utilize both new and existing infrastructure. Forklift upgrades of existing network equipment is costly and wasteful and should be avoided through flexible adaptation to the present infrastructure wherever possible. Without billing, you're a charity. The Wi-Fi must fit into the BSS and OSS systems within the mobile operator to ensure that the accounting and billing are as seamless as the access itself. The Wi-Fi core should adapt to the mobile core whilst providing Wi-Fi specific charging functionality, especially in cases where the mobile core cannot be used to charge users. The core is only as smart as the edge. In order for the Wi-Fi and mobile core to be intelligent, it must get the right information from the network's edge. Integration towards the Wi-Fi gateway is key, and the edge of network equipment must be intelligent enough to support the information required by the core. 
If either of these parts are wrong, seamless access will be very difficult to achieve. Wi-Fi is no longer a best effort service. The Wi-Fi network must be carrier class. If subscribers' devices are seamlessly connecting and the edge or the core network provides low quality service, the subscriber experience will be that the operator's data service is broken. Mm -hmm. Little distinction will be given to the access method. Most subscribers won't even know that they're on Wi-Fi. Business to business and venue services are a good source of revenue. Mobile operators can't lose sight of the challenges around venues. They can be a great source of revenue, but you must provide value to both your subscribers and the venue owners in order to be successful. This can be a bit of a paradigm shift for mobile operators who are used to procuring sites and installing base stations to extend mobile data reach. Furthermore, in the rush to go 100% seamless, don't forget the humble portal, which is still required for open SSID access. So that's it for my part of this presentation. Thanks for listening. I've mainly concentrated on presenting the overall description of the required integration and service interaction with the mobile core that's needed to produce a truly seamless Wi-Fi service. I will now hand over to Sammy from our partner Ericsson, who will complete this picture by showing how Ericsson's advanced Wi-Fi and mobile core infrastructure can extend this intelligent and seamless experience right to the edge of the network. Thank you, Simon, for your part. Uh, let me first introduce myself. My name is Sameh Iskander. I'm part of a global sales support working within Ericsson based in Stockholm, Sweden. Today, I'm going to present to you Ericsson view on the Wi-Fi integrated and the heterogeneous network. So heterogeneous network is actually redefining your Wi-Fi strategy. Uh, today, of course, we have uh, operators that have 2G, 3G, and 4G. And of course, we have uh, non-operator and operator Wi-Fi. So uh, that's today actually uh, technology that we have. From Ericsson vision perspective, actually to have the mobile broadband, it's how to have normal operator access, like as I mentioned, 2G, 3G, and Wi-Fi, but how to have it more control kind of an access. Of course, we still have the non-operator Wi-Fi, but the concept is if we are able to have a performance indicator on the Wi-Fi so that it's easy for the operator to have a controlled access, that's of course will give the operator the power to monetize the Wi-Fi. And at the end of the day, the most important part are the end user experience is everything because that's how the technology is used as an enabler to give uh, you, get a good user experience. So uh, integrated Wi-Fi actually, uh, there's different factors as a catalyst uh, for the success of that. So we from Ericsson believe that uh, the main part for integrated Wi-Fi. Number one, which is avoid client software, because uh, it's very expensive actually for a lot of operators to try to roll out different kind of uh, client software. And actually uh, it's affecting a lot operators for slow development. And as you have more user intervention, uh, it's less uh, attempting to a lot of operators. And the second point after the avoid client software, which is the seamless device login. At the end of the day, actually users, they don't care and they don't pay attention to what kind of connection they have. At the end of the day, they care only to have a good user experience. So by having a seamless device login, attracting different kinds of authentication and authorization mechanisms, that's actually a second key factor for the success of the integrated Wi-Fi. And if you talk about the last one, which is the device assistance, which is currently being uh, provided by different kind of standardization on 3GPP, whether we are talking about the radio part or the core part, about hotspot 2.0 and DSF traffic steering on the radio part as per RAN 2 3GPP. So mainly the three factors that will have the success of the Wi-Fi, uh, it's mainly uh, avoid client software, seamless device login and device assist. And at the end of the day, it's all about the user experience. So Ericsson Wi-Fi solution strategy, as you can see here from my diagram, currently we have the normal kind of mobile network, which is you have a handset connected to different kind of radio, E node B or node B through the mobile network, backhauling to the packet gateway. And then you're gonna have normal kind of access to your uh, mobile operator services and access the normal internet. And then if we are now talking about the Wi-Fi, Currently, you have the different kind of access point and then through your fixed network and then your Wi-Fi gateway 
It's going to be anchored to the packet gate. We're using uh, S2A over GTP. That's at least uh, our strategy. And then by anchoring the user to the packet gateway, it will be easy to bundle the same kind of services that you are offering over the mobile network, the same over Wi-Fi. And we have to consider even what's coming on the standardization, as I'm going to show you, you later on, how the seamless mobility will affect that. Ericsson Wi-Fi Gateway, it's actually one of the enablement of the Wi-Fi core integration. We are leveraging on having the best in breed to provide Wi-Fi subscriber management, the same like mobile broadband principle. So actually our Wi-Fi Gateway is based on Ericsson Smart Service Router, what we call SSR. Uh, actually our box uh, is capable of doing deep packet inspection, online and offline charging system by having direct GY and GZ. Uh, being able to do as well uh, policy management by having GX to the different PCRF within the mobile operator. So for mobile operator, it's going to be like plug and play, actually leveraging on the current install base they have from charging system, from uh, policy management, just introducing the Wi-Fi gateway will smooth the integration of that. And of course, it have all the needed capability as a Wi-Fi gateway for secured and open SSID. So from Ericsson perspective, it's mainly gathering best of mobile and fixed broadband knowledge and to have a carrier class performance, scalability, resiliency, and feature density. As I mentioned in my previous slides when I'm, I was talking about IP session mobility, actually Ericsson was the first to show during Mobile World Congress 2013 and demonstrated with the collaboration actually of Qualcomm, the concept of IP session mobility which is the capability of having a handset clientless, no impact on any application or need of extra client-based software to provide seamless handover between 3GPP and Wi-Fi and back again. And of course, that's leveraging on Ericsson Wi-Fi gateway and packet gateway to provide this kind of S2A mobility. So the demo actually is delivering a seamless user experience including optimum network connection, authentication, authorization, subscriber session management, and overall user experience. The end-to-end -end actually solution includes integration in both radio networks and mobile packet core. Actually, as you can see here, we are trying to leverage what is the bad habits we have on the Wi-Fi. As you can see here, I'm showing actually four different bad habits, like all of us uh, have them every day. The first one I can say, which is reaching. So actually one of the bad habits of the device is that it's automatically jumped to the Wi-Fi when you are within the range and it doesn't care actually if you're gonna have a good Wi-Fi or not. So that's one of the bad habits of the Wi-Fi that might affect the user experience. The second point, which is the unhealthy choice. For some networks actually, the same mobile operator might have like LTE, high-speed switched, and Wi-Fi. Maybe the Wi-Fi is loaded, but since the handset automatically take the unhealthy choice, which is the Wi-Fi instead of the LTE, that gives also as well a bad user experience. And another bad habit, actually, it's dribbling, which is the concept of people might be moving to Wi-Fi while he have a good experience on the 3GPP. It's mainly based on having a lower speed backhaul in relation to the Wi-Fi than the 3G. So at the end of the day, it's gonna give a bad user experience. And one also of the well-known kind of problems as a bad habit of Wi-Fi, which is the ping pong, which usually we have when we have uh, people just moving around, commuting on a bus, and then when it, they just have a Wi-Fi, they just try to jump in into that. So tackling those four parts of the Wi-Fi, actually this is affecting how Wi-Fi user experience so that a lot of operators are not keen on having a Wi-Fi as an add-on kind of radio access type. So from our perspective, I'm going to show you in my next slide uh, how we can tackle those problems. Real-time traffic steering. This is actually one of the strongest things that Ericsson have shown lately which is related to best and user experience with the different kind of network resources. Currently, mobile operators, they have their own 3GPP based on micro and macro kind of connectivity. 
and then how to have the Wi-Fi and to do the right correlation and how to steer the user between different kinds of access because the main point here is to have a good user experience and always best connected with a real-time kind of steering. So the concept here for the solution is actually providing clientless kind of solution for dynamic traffic steering between cellular and Wi-Fi coverage and also to have a real-time visibility for both 3GPP and Wi-Fi because at the end of the day, we care to have such a solution clientless, as I mentioned before, and to have no barriers for user adoption because usually when you have to have a client on the handset, people are less attracted to use such a feature. So as I mentioned, traffic steering here is one of the key points that will enable the concept of uh, core integration. So if we check here the graph, we find on the x-axis we have the user throughput and on the y-axis the traffic volume per user. Just as a talk, this is more like uh, showing the concept more than the real numbers. So the concept here, we have a macro 3GPP network combined actually with a standalone non-integrated Wi-Fi. As you can see, the 3GPP actually, this is the black colored graph here. It's called 3GPP network only. And you have here the blue line, which is the traditional Wi-Fi offload. This one is the uncoordinated one. It's not combined with the 3GPP. It's not integrated. And actually, this is presented, as I mentioned before, by the blue colored line. So actually, if we check here the red line, which is having a 3GPP network combined with the Wi-Fi integrated. So actually, this is where the red curve can achieve. You can achieve more throughput for the end user and uh, at the same time, more revenue for the operator because actually here, by having more throughput per user, it means better user experience better optimization for the current install base of the access point, better usage of the 3GPP and Wi-Fi and the correlation between both of them. For 3GPP Wi-Fi integration, actually, to enable a full monetization of the Wi-Fi, we believe actually there is like four pillars just to be able to do that. First, as I mentioned, traffic steering so that you can have a good and improved user experience because mainly you can do uh, steer the user between 3GPP and Wi-Fi both ways so that at the end of the day, the user are happy uh, with the quality of his experience browsing through his handset or through his laptop. And the second pillar, which is the core integration, so that from user perspective, he's seamlessly authenticated. From mobile operator perspective, he's reusing his charging and policies and services, so it's better TCO for his uh, network and better reuse of his uh, current resources for core integration. And the fourth pillar, which is the hardware integration. So as I mentioned, the easy deployment by having the high capacities needed for Wi-Fi gateway and packet gateway, just to have those uh, hardware integration for easy implementation and every total cost of ownership for the operator. And last, but not least, as a pillar, which is the OMM integration, because for operation and maintenance integration, when you are leveraging on the same operation and maintenance nodes for uh, the same kind of uh, 3G and the same kind of normal packet core, the same for Wi-Fi, it's providing better total cost of ownership and actually it's reduced the total cost of ownership for the mobile operators. As we mentioned about the traffic steering, also here I want to wrap up about uh, the different kind of standards that Ericsson actually is driving from different perspectives. So here, as you can see, Ericsson have actually different stands, whether we are talking about NDSF, about Hotspot 2.0, about what's going on on the 3GPP RAN2 or uh, real-time traffic steering and access selection, as well the IP session mobility uh, in which we showed uh, how our ESAM AUG as part of the pre-3GPP R12 is coming. So Ericsson actually has products in all of this kind of standardization. We are driving such a standardization, and here I'm summarizing the different kind of standardization and the current limitations, whether on the handsets or uh, on the current uh, ecosystem that we have, and actually how Ericsson is supporting that. Just um, wrapping up on my slides, so actually Ericsson C as the right integration for mobility, there's a three pillars are important for all mobile and user part. 
First, it's superior performance. As long as the user have a consistent high performance user experience, whether they are connected over Wi-Fi or 3GPP networks, people will be happy. And as I mentioned before, user actually, he don't care about what kind of access he have, as long as he have a good or superior performance. Second point, clientless kind of a solution. Because as we have more clientless solution, so no barriers to easily integrate, no barriers for immediate and mass adoption. So that's also one of the key drivers for mobility and for Wi-Fi as an integrated. And at the end of the day, which is the third pillar, which is the network driven, just to have an operator controlled and optimized resources. So for the operator, he's leveraging on his current install base for packet core, for operational and maintenance to provide different kind of access. As I mentioned, 3G, 4G, 2G, and Wi-Fi and LTE at the same time. So by having those three pillars, it can easily be leveraged on that to monetize Wi-Fi and to be part of the mobile broadband services offering. Finally, um, I will hand over to Simon, my colleague, just to wrap up on our presentation. Thanks, Sammy, for that interesting presentation. To wrap up, I'd just like to highlight some of the reasons why both Ericsson and Attila are excited about the opportunities generated through our partnership. As you've heard throughout this webinar, providing carrier class Wi-Fi is a demanding challenge, which requires a best of breed approach from the core to the network edge. We believe that Ericsson and Attila combined can meet and exceed the needs of mobile operators who need to provide truly seamless mobile data and Wi-Fi to their subscribers. As a final note, we will be at Mobile World Congress in Hall 5, Stand 5G66. If you'd like to schedule a meeting with us to discuss your Wi-Fi requirements, please feel free to send us an email or just drop by our stand. Now I'd like to hand back to James for a quick wrap-up. Thanks, Simon, and thanks also, Simon, for your interesting thoughts there. As I said, both speakers will be available to take your questions. You can ask a question by typing it into the text field on the main page of this webinar and both of our presenters will answer in real time. Thank you very much for joining us today on telecoms.com.